Hey everybody, it's Susie. Welcome to my craft room. Okay, I'm sorry that I'm so late getting this video out. It's like 3 a.m. Saturday morning. Um, <laughs> so really, y'all, it's this is Friday. I told y'all I was going to post a video on Friday, so this is my Friday video. And I apologize that I did not get it um, posted on Friday. So y'all just think it's Saturday, but you know, it, it's Friday in, in my world. So we're gonna stick with that. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Since it's my channel, I guess I can see it's whatever day I want to, right? <laughs> just kidding y'all. Okay, what I spent Friday doing, well, at least the first half of Friday, was inking all of my pages and all of my ephemera. So that was quite a job. Now, also, um, I did do some gluing uh, around my stitching on some of my pages, and I do intend to do it on all, and I'm going to tell you why. I don't normally do it, and I've never seen anybody else do it, but when I did my sewing, I was sewing a lot of my ephemera pieces and my pages, one right after the other. And the only thing that I was really changing was my my stitch width, not my length. So my stitches turned out to be pretty close together on my pages. And when your stitches are that close together, it kind of makes your paper like perforated, and I don't want it to tear off. And so that's why I'm just kind of going around the little edge, you know, the stitching with my glue, and then I'm just kind of rubbing it, you know, down in there to make sure that it gets into those little holes to kind of kind of glue them back together to reinforce them. I especially wanted to make sure I did it on where my rings go through because I, I don't want that to be fragile whatsoever. That's why we put the reinforcer on there, you know, and I don't want to, you know, take away that strength by having those little tiny stitches. So that was kind of the method to my madness. After I inked up my pages, I pulled out the ephemera pieces that I thought I might be using, and I placed them where I thought I might want them. Well, you know, after three times of rearranging, I finally decided I'm going to make the video, even if I change the pieces around just a little bit. But I think I have things kind of spaced out the way I want them. You know, I didn't want the two envelopes that I made, you know, right close together. I didn't want my journaling pages like really too close together. I kind of wanted to space everything out so it had kind of like a nice flow to it. You know, it's not all completely symmetrical, so, you know, I didn't stress about all that. But um, I did, you know, try to get some kind of method to my madness so that, you know, all the like things weren't together. The only thing that I have not put in here that I think I might add as I'm making my embellishments is book page and I love using book page and I think vintage book page will look nice behind some of the, the pieces that I'm gonna be using so but other than that um, I'm gonna show you that so show you where I what I've decided kind of for the pages even if I change it around a little bit um, and then we are going to work on the I'll do you know all my gluing and stuff off camera um, just so you don't have to watch me you know glue for 30 minutes or an hour that's just like too extra right okay but i did want to show you kind of what i have in mind and um maybe if y'all have any other suggestions you can leave me a comment you know and i can see those before i start gluing down or whatever and then um, can make some changes so i definitely love your input let me know what you think okay so we're just gonna kind of do a flip through and then um on monday we are gonna make a journal cover there are two different ways that we can do a journal cover. We can do it like just about everybody else does it and have a front flap and a back flap. And I'm, I will show you how to do that. However, for the purposes of my journal, my journal will have not only the front and back flap, it's gonna have a spine for my rings to go through and kind of reinforce my rings. And then I want to, after that, I wanna make some pieces to hang on my rings kind of decorate them up a little bit and also what it will do is these the back parts of where these rings open right here I want to put things on here so that these don't continue to go in here and eat up my pages because you know those can be a little bit rough so I guess I could wrap those with some tape or something once I have my um, 
my spine on here, it will help prevent that from going through. But I still want to make sure that that's not going to keep running through and make my pages kind of, you know, weak or tear them. So that's, that's what I'm going to do. But I'm going to show you how to do both. And then I'm going to show you two different techniques for making that leather look cover. Now, you can use fabric, you can use paper, you can use whatever you want to to make your cover with. You don't have to do yours like mine. I'm just going to show you how to make a leather look cover using two different methods. Um, and I'm, I'm real excited to experiment with them myself. So, you know, that may end up being a how not to do it video. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and flip through this. Um... These are some of the pieces that I had made on the packaging, the um, you know food packaging that I cut up and I glued my pieces to. So these are re relatively thick. Well, no, they're really thick. So, but I'm gonna put this down as a pocket, you know, probably, you know, somewhere, and that'll be a journaling card. And so I really like that. And again, I'm not gonna use you know floral embellishments and you know all the girly stuff, the bling and all that. So, um, I did want to pull in my burlap because I will be using that. So, if I did not want to use, say, this, I could make my burlap pocket and just insert a journaling card. And I think that looks just absolutely scrumptious in this journal. So, I will be using burlap that, that I don't have in here yet because I'm not sure exactly that I'm going to settle with this placement completely. So, then on this page, I took uh, a picture of what I had covered with the tea bag, and this is like a, a lantern-type light. And I think I have it upside down. Isn't that special? I do. But it's got like the hurricane lamp in there. It looks kind of antique. And then I took this number stamp. Um, and, you know, of course, that's a stamped image, and I... I uh, well, I tore it out and inked around it, and then this was the one that, that I did the wax candle on. I am very, very pleased, by the way, with the wax. I, I will say that I did some experimenting with it. I'm going to get to that in a few minutes because I left one piece kind of alone. Um, but I was concerned at how this was going to feel once it dried. I didn't want it to have that greasy feel. I didn't want it to mark up the papers, and so I experimented a little bit. So, um, then this was one of the little, uh, pockets that I had made, and I have not added anything to it. Not to say that I won't, but right now, I have not. And I, actually, I, you know, I like it because you can journal on both sides. And then on this page, I pulled out this little, uh, pocket watch piece and this little wine bottle. I don't like the shininess of this wine bottle. And I want to show you the technique. And I think I brought my little bottle. I've got my little bottle over here. And maybe I'm lying. Maybe I don't. Hmm. What did I do with it? Okay. Well, the mystery starts. What have I done with it? I don't know. Okay. Well, I guess I'm probably not going to show you that. But what I do is I take some cleaner and you know I, I use awesome here I get it like at the Dollar Tree and I would just take something for a piece this small I would just um, take it and put it on a little piece of paper towel and I will wipe this off and what that does is it takes the shininess away but also there's some words on this bottle I you can't really read these because they're so tiny um, so I'm not going you know necessarily worry about it on this but I did want to tell you if you could and if you don't like the words when you, you know what, let's use this one for example. See this, I would not necessarily want those words or those words to show. And so I could take that that wet piece of towel and gently wipe over that and it removes those letters. And then, because that's gonna leave kind of a whitish like background, I would go ahead with it and kind of distress the rest of it to give that older look. Um, and then I could ink over it to even take it down further. So that's, sorry y'all, so that's kind of what I plan to do with this. If it doesn't work out, you won't see these again. Um, but, it, you know, just something to kind of tie this in. I like this color with this. You know, this kind of went well, so it kind of all tied in. Uh, so that's kind of why I chose those pieces for that spread. 
And then um, on this page, I do have a journaling card. And this will probably be where I use one of these um, burlap. Probably on the side, I like it. You know, just a little, you know, just we'll pretend like the rest of that's not there. You know, just a little burlap pocket to, to put that in. I love the looks of that. You know, this man, um, although he's on opposite sides, is wearing the same outfit. He has a red tie on, so I thought the red tie would make a cute little embellishment. I may end up cutting that tie down some, or I may not. I'm thinking I might back this on, uh, put this onto uh, some, back this, there we go, with some cardstock or packaging or something, um, and use it as a paper clip. I think that would be really, really cute, but I think that would need to be cut down to do that. Otherwise, it would just be, you know, maybe a little bit too much. So we'll see. We'll see what I do with that. If I even do anything with it, I might just chunk it. Or not chunk it, but, you know, save it for something else. All right, this is another one of those pages. I haven't got anything on it. Um, you know, I even could take this and put it here, but I think the tie for this page is just too big. I, you know, and I may change my mind. I might think it works for me. But, you know, that's why I chose what I did there. Okay, and on this page, all right, I'm going to use some of this vintage um, sheet music that I've torn out. And I may tear this down even further. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to use it on that page. Maybe like that, you know, maybe like that. You know, who knows? Maybe down the side. You know, I could, you know, make maybe a little um, paper, what do you call it, uh, ruffle. But I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but it's here for me to use. Now, this guitar and the other instruments that are in here also have that shiny look and feel to them. I don't like it for this journal. Some journals it's fine, but not this one. This one has nothing shiny in it. So I want to take that shine down. So again, I will use that, that uh, cleaner on there. There are other cleaners that you can use. I know that work on magazine pages. I assume it'll work on these as well. I've never tried it on these. If it doesn't work and it takes all the color out or it looks just awful, you know, I do have paint I can cover it, kind of restart and, you know, just, you know, not have all the details in it, and but still have the piece and use it for something else. But I thought, you know, that would be kind of cute, the, the guitar, you know, and, you know, piece of music or something. Maybe just kind of put it behind the guitar a little bit. You know, I don't know. But anyway... That's kind of my uh, my idea for that, is, you know, just to have a musical instrument. Um, you know, that way it's not, you know, too masculine or too feminine. It's just a, you know, a, a, a neutral piece. All right, on this one, I pulled out this little embellishment. I, I did uh, tear this a little bit more to make it look even more old and vintage, although this paper is very fragile. Um, I, I wanted it to look a little more. Well, obviously, he is looking at a map with his magnifying glass, and I thought these cute little um, road things, you know, uh, Lord have mercy, I can't even come up with words at all this morning, can I? Uh, you know, like the signs you'd see along the side of the interstate. I thought that was really neat, especially with the map little thing. And then I stuck this little card in there just because the colors kind of go together a little bit. I may end up changing that. I don't know. Um, I've moved that stuff around so much. All right, on this one, I just put a clock face and then one of these little wine bottles. Again, I want to change that up a little bit. Okay, and on here, my thoughts are I will use this little extra piece that was cut off of something, and that's probably what I'm going to put right here. Um, and I may put the leather look piece on here, and this will be like to um, tuck the flap inside, in and out of, you know, when you open your envelope. I have this paper clip because I'm holding stuff on the other side. Um, I don't know why I keep saying, um, oh it's like I can't get my words to come out to get to write tonight. I'm so sorry. I should probably just start all over again when I... I'm clear-minded or something. I do not have anything in this envelope yet. I will be putting some writing papers in there. I do have the writing papers printed out. I just don't have the edges trimmed off yet. You know, all these white edges trimmed off to be able to fold them up and put in there. That wasn't just priority. I wanted to get this together because y'all know what it, you know, what it's like to trim off the edges and fold them up and stick them somewhere. Okay. And then on this one, this is one of those pieces I used the tea, the tea bag on, and I thought that would probably look nice on here, and I'm, 
probably going to cut that bottle down or put this on top like that to make it smaller. I may even just go with one or the other just because I think it's too big for this piece. But I wanted to show it to you. Remember, this was a larger one. This was the one that had like the four pieces to it. And I split that in two. Well, I'll probably go split this in two as well. And maybe use something like that. But I do want to take that shininess off of that. So that's kind of what I have in mind for that. And this piece, the colors in his uh, outfit look great with this. So I wanted to... Um, you know, use that. Now, what I think I'm going to use this for is I think I'm going to glue this down as a top tuck piece or a bottom tuck piece or maybe even a corner tuck. Probably a corner tuck. I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, whatever I decide to do with it, and then I'll um, insert some writing papers. I don't want to lose my journaling places in this journal. It's a lot of pages to journal on, but I want to give it some nice look. It's easier to work with the page that already has something on it than to face a blank page when you're journaling. So I do want to put something at least on, you know, one or the other page or both for interest, um, for beauty, obviously, and just so that you're not facing a blank journaling page because, you know, this journal will be for sale. So now this one, this is another one of those little um, that I did on the packaging in this as well. And I will use that as a pocket and this is a journaling card to go on there. And on here, and this uh, this car, you know, kind of went with, with this theme here. Same car, you know, same guy, same coat. And I thought this little clock or watch, pocket watch, might be cute, might be too big for this side. I don't know. I may end up taking that piece off right there, but then it kind of takes away from the, you know, the look of the pocket watch. I suppose I could trim that gold off, make it a little bit smaller. I could put it over here, or I may not use it at all on this page. But it's there in case I do want to use it. I just thought the colors in this went really great with this background. Um, so we'll see if I use that. And then this one is actually a vintage, uh, a, a copy anyway, a vintage handwritten, handmade music notes. So whoever actually created this in 1881 wrote all these notes out by hand. They drew the little symbols by hand, the, the meters and the wrist and, you know, everything is done by hand. That's a lot of work. I can't even imagine. You know, we don't realize today how good we have it having all the fancy machines. This is one that kind of a uh, little fancy uh, ottoman thing. I liked it because it does add a little bit of color. I'm thinking, uh, and this is one that I covered with the um, tea bag. And in case y'all missed it, and by the way, thank you for all my new subscribers that have come along. I really appreciate you being here. Of course, I appreciate all my old subscribers. Or not old, but y'all know what I mean. The ones who have been with me for a day or a week or a month or two months, however long I've been on, um, that continue to follow me. And I, I really, really appreciate it. Now, in case you missed it before when I showed it, um, you know, I tore the tea bag around. I told y'all I wasn't stressed about it because I really kind of like the, the raggediness of the tea bag on this particular piece. I, or I could have just torn the piece out with the tea bag all at one time. Or if you come across, and, and this is just a single magazine page, so it's pretty flimsy. But if I wanted to take that off, I could just take my file and file that down a little bit, and it will it will make that where you can get it off just about perfectly. Um, so I use my file a lot to fix little things. So keep that in mind. Oh, I was, I was telling you, I think I'm going to take that off and maybe use it like that to get rid of the florals because I think that really does look pretty. So that's kind of what I have in mind. But I want to show you what it looks like now and probably what I'm going to do with it to alter it. Of course, I will not throw that away. I'll save that to use somewhere else because we don't throw anything away, do we? Okay, and I thought this was a really cute ad. I'm not sure that I quite like it with this. I probably don't. I might like it with this better because of the colors. And it's so big. I don't know. Maybe I should um, brush this with some gesso and then ink it just to kind of take 
that black down to more of the gray tones, you know, like are in my pages. Maybe that's what I should do. Maybe I should. Okay, this page, this is one of those uh, pockets that I made. Uh, and this is just an embellishment. I don't think I'll use it on this page, but I do think I'll probably use it over here because I like it. I really like it. And these two look to good together. And this is kind of a car and a car that kind of ties that in. Um, I could use some, you know, maybe grayish or more brownish uh, elements to tie that in a little bit more. So we'll see. But, you know, I'm thinking that I might use this somewhere. And I may get rid of this or I may get rid of that. I don't know. But this was just kind of my, my thoughts on about my third attempt of rearranging things. Okay. On this page... Now that I see this here, I'm not crazy about it. The reason I chose this, this was actually one that I did the tea back on, and it was a picture of like a brass bathtub with some um, kind of grayish green curtains and some greenery behind the window. You could actually see out the window. I covered it, and remember I chose this kind of more stained paper to put on here because I did want to take those colors down, and it, it did exactly what I wanted it to. And these colors actually match his outfit perfectly. Although, you know, when you're flipping through and you see this, you don't really know what it is. Um, and the greens, you know, complement each other. So I'm thinking I might use that. This is, again, another one of those that I'm going to make a pocket and a journaling card with, you know, somewhere on that page. These cars and this guy are the same. So it, it ties those two pages together. On this page, do y'all remember that on the guitar or, or violin or whatever that other one was, it was stuck to this. This was like a double thickness piece. Well, this is where I tore it off. You know, no big deal because, you know, I'm going to cover that with something. Uh, but I'm thinking, you know, maybe even to put the this little piece of over the top of that. And that kind of ties that in and I wouldn't even have to cover it up quite that much. And I think that would be just an awesome piece there. Now, moving on to this, I liked this little clock because it the colors actually go together. The inking on this matches the browns on that. And then this little bottle, again, I don't like the shininess, so I'll take the shininess down. But these colors go absolutely splendid together. So I'm thinking, you know, this works for me for now. Now, on this page, I have put one of these, uh, like, highway-type pieces. I'm thinking I'm going to use this and, and glue it down, you know, at the top and use this to put some writing papers in. I absolutely love this piece. Um, and I stuck this little three in here because the colors match great. And I think it, well, it would have been cute if I had it not to, to get taken a dive bomb into the floor. Oh, goodness. Ugh. Okay. I'm thinking that'll be cute. Oh, my goodness. Hang on, y'all. Sorry. Maybe on a corner, you know, maybe not. You know, we'll see. I, I think it's a little bit shiny for me. I may try to take that down too a little bit just because I, I really don't want shiny. I may even try to peel this top layer off because I'm not crazy about it being that thick of a foam. I may or may not use it. I don't know. You know, it's just, I just like the colors together. So that's why I put it on there. Now this piece, I really did not think I would use this sundial, but look how great it looks with that, with the green in that car. So de depending and on here. So I'm thinking this would be pretty down here. I may even, you know, put it say here as a tuck spot. But the only thing is that this is pretty fragile, even though this is a thicker paper, you know, in and out might make that a little bit fragile. And I don't want to put it upside down because that would look stupid. Um, but I may use that for a tuck of some sort. Maybe if I put it on this side, glue that down. Yeah, that's, that might be what I do. And put it there. Or even do it, you know, as an extra tuck on here. Um, no, I don't want to cover up the car. I, I really like that. Um, you know, maybe. I don't know. But anyway, I like it on this page together. So that's why it's here. To, to do something here. Okay. On this... Um, you know, just a, a motorcycle here. And this I thought I would make just as a label to put on here. Just, I don't know what for, just for a label, just because I like labels. 
So I thought that would be kind of cute. And this was just a little scrap piece that I had, you know, from something that I had to cut down because, you know, it didn't work full size. The boots I thought were cute, you know, to kind of go with the motorcycle theme. Again, these are shiny. I don't like how bright these colors are. So I will probably, you know, take my paper towel and that, that cleaner and try to get that shiny off. Um, if they're still too deep and dark, then I'll try to gesso over them a little bit and ink them and see how that looks. If I don't like them, then they go into the use on something else pile. Um, I do have a journaling card here. And oh, and I, one thing I was thinking about doing with this was making this into a paper clip as well. So, yeah, I'm holding something down over there. All right, so I would attach. The paper clip actually to you know the back of my piece here and then this would I would put another piece here to go you know like that so that it would attach to the page and that's how the boots would look attached as a paper clip I think that would be cute if I can make these work right now I'm not not pleased with how deep they are you know they don't quite go with that so with this this may be another place I put just a little, a little pocket um, with the burlap. I think that would be really cute with that as well. So that's just, you know, just a thought. I know something like this, I may take and put, you know, just a little piece of burlap behind it, shabby it up a little bit, and I think that would just make the cutest little, cutest little, um, well, whatever I said it was. Anyhow, all right, so this clock, I'm thinking it's too big, but that car is kind of big. So I thought, well, you know what? That kind of might work. Um, I wish it had a little bit of that green in it, but it doesn't. I guess I could take some inks and maybe, you know, put some of those inks in there. I don't know. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not positive about this. I could cut these little bells off, I suppose. This paper is so fragile make it smaller or just not use this at all I could come back in here you know with a, a stamp of a car um, you know or something I mean I don't know we'll, we'll, we'll say I like it but anyway I don't know if y'all recall but this was the piece that I sewed that I had all the attention issues with now that I have it glued and inked I love how shabby that looks so I wish I had more mistakes <laughs> I really like that look. Okay, so um, I may put a little embellishment on that. I may not. I, you know, I I love these papers. That they're just so easy to work with. Okay, again, I have another piece of vintage sheet music I thought would go well here. You know, just a man's kind of bow tie. This doesn't have as much shiny as the other pieces. Still not happy with it. I want to bring that down in a hair. So this bottle I kind of chose because the colors kind of work together. Um, I do want to take the shiny off that. We'll see how that works out. Uh, you know, just for, you know, I don't know, just for something. I mean, we might. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see how it works out. But, I'm, you know, I definitely want to use, like, the little bow tie. You know, I could use that uh, and glue just, you know, like, the tops of these two down and use that as a tuck spot for some more uh, journaling papers. So, I mean, there's so much that we can do, you know. All right, this is just a picture. And I thought the colors in this picture tied in with this. This is the Serenity Prayer. Here is another uh, pocket with a journaling card that I want to use. I'm thinking I'm going to use this piece. This is an envelope as a closure for this envelope. So just to barely have it there. So that, let me take that off. So that when you open and then you can close it, you know, close it back. This one does have a journaling card already in there. The one that... You know, I showed y'all before that I had done up. And so I'm not 100% sure since this is so thick that you would be able to use this as a closure um, because you can't get that paper in and out very well. Now, I could just go that way with it, just a little piece like that. But getting it to tuck back in might be difficult. So it might be better if I made that into a paper clip and then you could put it on here to paper clip it closed. I think that's the idea. I think I like that. Okay. Now this piece, you know, I thought, 
I don't know, but I like the colors. It matched this perfectly. The only thing is, I think it's too big. So I might chop that off right there and maybe put it down in the corner like that. Or maybe up in the corner like that. I don't know. I just, I like the colors. I even kind of like the piece. I guess I could use that piece off the bottom. So, anyway, I like the colors in this piece with this page. You know, I, I do, and so that's why it's there. All right, this is another one of those that I covered with a tea bag, and it, it is a lantern type thing. Really, really pretty. Um, so, I like it, but I would like for it to have a little bit more of those greens in there. But I don't think of, even if I used green ink, it would show up. Maybe if I used a little bit of green um, watercolor and kind of went over it, that might help tie that in together. So I think I'll try that. And if not, it'll go in the Use Me Later pile. This is another one of those little scraps that, you know, was cut off a piece and I sewed around it. And I'm going to put these little tickets in there. Obviously, I need to re-glue that. Um... Let me stick it this way so I'll remember to fix that. And then I think that's really, really cute like that. So then I turn the page and I have a little clock down here. And this man right here, and I thought I was going to use this little scrap piece that I sewed around and just make a little top tuck for this little ticket thing. I will probably punch a hole in this, um, but I probably won't put anything in it since it's going to go into a top tuck. I thought about using it as a bottom tuck. Um, I don't know why I decided not to, and I may yet. Who knows? But this guy is the same as this guy. I may end up putting this over here. I like this hat because he has a hat. I, again, don't like how dark that is. So I'm going to try to take that down again. If not, I'll probably try to gesso over it to, and ink it to see if I can get it you know, more muted. But I just thought the hat was really cute with this. And so that's kind of what I was thinking there. Then I get, I have this guitar again. But this is, you know, the one that was on the back and it's a little bigger. But again, I think I'm going to try to use this somehow, maybe, you know, like as a, a side tuck. I suppose I could make a belly band out of this. Would the guitar look stupid sideways? Not really, would it? Or maybe kind of at an angle like that. You know, put this on a little thicker card. And if I did that, then I could move it more like that. Right, that would be nice. And then had that as a belly band. That's a great idea, isn't it? So that's probably what I'm going to do with that. Okay, so then I have this little clock face that these colors match into this guitar quite well. This is another one of those scraps that I made just a little pocket out of. And then I made this piece out of scraps as a journaling card, so I'll probably tuck that in there. And then on this page, this was a piece of the stamped um, card that I, you know, a stamp that I had. I stamped it onto a piece of like notebook paper, uh, and then I inked it. This was one that we did the candle wax on. It looks fabulous. You can see through it. I just, I love the look of that. So I'm real pleased with that. Okay, on um, on this page, this car matches this car, and I'm thinking I will make um, maybe a dangly or maybe a paper clip. I think that's what I had planned to do, a paper clip to hold, because this is a pocket to hold that pocket closed, you know, or just to hang on there. You know, I just like it. So I'm probably going to use that like that. And here's that same car again. I like it. Uh-oh. And this is just a little tiny picture of like a road, a little lane that you would drive down. I think that's really cute. Again, I want to take those down a little bit. This did come out of a magazine. Um, and so I'd like to mute that up just a little bit more. And I may or may not use it. Uh, I just think it's too tiny for, for this page if I'm going to use that. But this is just an old... Um, uh, it's a copy of a vintage ad that was for a, a piano. But I really like it. Uh, I think it's really, really striking. I think it would make a beautiful belly band. I mean, you know, make a belly band with it. I don't know. Um, I, I just don't know yet. I, but I am going to use it, I, I think. I, I do really like that. I think it's pretty. I, I like the colors in it. Um, 
you know, it, it dresses it up just a hair. Okay, now on this page, I just have a journaling card, uh, and I'm thinking I might use that for a corner tuck to tuck some journaling pages in. You know, I might have it at the top or the bottom. You know, I kind of want it so that when I have my journal, that it's kind of equal at the bottom and the top because a lot of times we end up putting stuff at the bottom and our bottom is like wonky out like that. So I want to kind of keep my placements somewhat even. Uh, this was a little clock that we did with the wax on it. Um, that side is the right side. And I thought that was really, really cute. Not sure how I use it yet, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to use it on that page because I like it. And then um, this page is just a piece of the vintage sheet music that I have, you know, put on here. This was just a little picture. And I'm thinking I might use that for either a paper clip or a top tuck. I'm thinking a top tuck is what I had in mind and then put this across the bottom. Of course, I would need to tear that off a little bit and re-ink, but... You know, that kind of gives that page a little bit of character. So that's kind of what I'm thinking there. And then on this page, um, this I would make into, you know, make a little hole, make this into a, um, a tag and, you know, put some kind of twine or something on here and just tuck it in this little tiny left, you know, scrap piece that I sewed around. The colors here match the colors there. Everything kind of goes together well, you know, simple but pretty. Okay, and on this, I, I put another one of those little clocks that, you know, we did with the candle wax. Another one of these little um, scraps that I'm, I'm going to put a little ticket in, I think. All right, this is the piece that I saved to show you in just a few minutes. Okay, and here um, I have this guy, and although he's not in the same exact outfit there, um, you know, the colors are good. It works for me. This was another one of those ads that was actually put on um, book page then and it was old book page so it was already yellow so then um, we did the wax on this page I love how it looks that you can kind of kind of see that there is writing behind there but you still have journaling space here I think that is very very pretty and I'm thinking I might I may not even use this on here I don't like all that together I don't know what I had in mind okay so that'll probably go in a to you to, to use later pile all right i'm gonna come back to this on this side i don't know if y'all remember this was a piece that um i did the tea bag on and it was just a little table and now that it has the tea bag and i've toned it down you know it doesn't really matter what it is it's just a nice embellishment that kind of ties in this is another one of those you know like highway uh, shape signs and this car and this car, you know, this guy's the same. That looks good. I'm probably going to use that either as a top tuck or maybe a corner tuck, you know, to, you know, tuck stuff in. I'm just not sure, but I know that I'm probably going to use this here. That's kind of my plan here. All right. And then on this page, I have another one of these little clocks that I think make cute little embellishments, particularly, you know, if I put some, oh, let's try this. I put, you know, just something behind it just to kind of, you know, give it some uh, interest and texture. Okay, so on this page, again, another piece of the sheet music. And on this one, this is the top piece of that violin. Um, and this has sparklies, glittery things on it. That doesn't work for me. So, obviously, I may have to sand the sparklies off, you know, like that. A little bit. That's the wrong side, Susie. Okay. But anyway, I can get those sparklies off and go back and ink those edges and see if that works for me. But I, the sparklies definitely have to go, and they are raised up. And that's why, you know, I said kind of sand them down a little bit just to get, just to get that down because I don't want that necessarily to show. Um, so I will try to alter this a little bit, you know, see what we can come up with. And this is a single boot. This was um, a part of the other boots that you saw earlier. They were stuck down to it, you know, to give it dimension. And there was only one boot, but I thought this would make a cute, cute, cute little paper clip to, you know, clip your things down with. So I think that's what I'm going to do with that. And here's another one of these uh, highway-shaped signs for the United States. 
and you know it's a journaling card and I need to fix that right there um, and I thought I would probably use that as a corner tuck piece there okay this is one of the pages that I went around with the glue like I said I'm gonna do it with all of them and although it is a tad bit shiny around there because I didn't you know make sure that I used the non matte but I, I probably will add some baby powder to my glue the next time before I you know do the other pages but I did about three of these pages like that just to see if it would fill in the holes and do what I wanted it to do. It absolutely does. I like it. So I am going to continue with that process, um, you know, mainly because my stitches are so, so close together. On this piece, this is another one of like little advertisements. I'm probably going to use that, you know, like as a top corner tuck. Um, and then on here, again, I have a another... Um, thing I'm making a pocket with and then the journaling card matching journaling card to go in it this little number two I thought you know kind of tied in to these colors very well and so I might use that it actually ties in better with this so I might use that over there y'all know how we change our mind a thousand times so I know you're not surprised all right here's just a little clock piece that I think I'm gonna you know put somewhere on here this is another one of those little pockets that I made um, I'm not crazy about the way that this inked up around the edges. And I'll tell you why it turned this color. This paper, this already had a, a tint to it. For example, it had a background color. When I inked around it, it changed the color up a little bit. But then when I put the glue around these stitches and I rubbed it, it turned it this funky color. So... I may end up gessoing that. I don't know, but I don't like the color that it made that. Y'all may say it's okay. Don't stress out about it. I'm not going to stress out about it, but I am going to change it. So we'll see what I do with it. He might end up getting covered up in that whole process, but we'll see. Um, it did it to the other side as well, um, but not so much because I didn't actually put the glue on here. But I think kind of where it came through the holes, it changed the color a little bit. But this side, obviously, is not that like poopy green. I mean, it really turned it like a poopy green. I don't like that, but anyway. So this poopy green camera worked good, you know, but I don't know if I use it or not, but this is one that we did the um, candle on. And this piece, you know, he's kind of wearing the same thing. So I might tie that into that, the background colors. I don't necessarily like it with that unless I make it like as a paper clip closure but then it would kind of cover him up there so that would kind of defeat the purpose I think I might put that there I like this little car um this one we did we use the wax on? no we did not this one is just a piece of um coffee dyed paper that I stamped that little truck on and fussy cut around it onto a, a piece of packaging I thought that could make a cute paper clip or a, a tuck so that's probably what I'm going to use there. Um, I like it. So then this one is another one of those pieces of scraps. And this was a piece that I had cut off of another piece that I will use as, you know, like a pocket and a journaling card. And we may stick this extra one in here like that. That works for me. I don't know where that clock came from, but I'll go somewhere. And then this um, is the final... Uh, journaling page you know that has the lines on it this guy obviously matches this you know the car is the same um and i need to, to glue that down right there so i'm i'm definitely going to punch a hole in here this may be a dangle off of a paper clip even off the side you know i don't know i don't want to you know girl it up so i'm going to be real careful with what i choose here all right and then this is the very back page. And I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I want back here. I like this. I don't think it really ties in with the journal at all. I mean, there's really nothing household about it. So, I, you know what? I think I just made a decision. Okay, that was easy enough. <coughs> so, I'm going to use this vintage sheet music. I'm probably just going to glue that flat down. I'm not going to try to do anything else with it. 
um, because I just like it. I just think it's very striking. Now, I'm going to go back to that other piece that I was telling you about. Let me see where I'm at on my time. Oh, my goodness, I need to hurry. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> you know, I have asthma. Y'all know that. And those that have, that have been with me for a while know that. There's things that, that set my asthma off, and I have a real sensitivity to fragrance. And sometimes the fragrance will stop me up or close me up or whatever. So I have to be real careful, like using air fresheners or, you know, carpet fresheners or even some cleaners. You know, I don't do smelly candles and all that. Well, guess what? Since we decided to use candles to try to, 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 try to do this, me and all my stupidity bought scented candles. And they're sitting here right beside me on my work table. So how stupid is that? I know. Susie, put them away. Just... Put them on. You know what? I'm going to do that right now. Put them in this drawer. I took care of that. That one's not scented. It shouldn't bother me. And definitely gets them right out of my face, right? Okay. So, <clears throat> that's what was choking me up here. Sorry about that, y'all. The envelope. Where? I mean, the... Here. This. All right. This was the other uh, pocket that we were making. And this was the one that I did the wax on. And I wanted to show you something with the wax. And that's why it hasn't been sewn up yet. I wanted to do an experiment to find out if this wax was going to interact with my other paper. So I took what I did with my coffee dye piece of paper I was using. I don't know. Anyway, I had a piece of coffee dyed paper because that's what's in the journal. And I placed... A piece of coffee dyed paper on one side and a paper towel on the other side and I wanted to see if any of this wax would come off either on the page or on the paper towel because if it did I did not want to use it at all because I don't want it affecting my pages I don't want this wax to get on the page so that you can't write on it because obviously you know you're not going to be able to write on on wax it just doesn't work it just it doesn't unless you have some kind of you know other pen that I don't know that works on wax so um, I don't want it to affect my other pages to affect the ability to write on so I wanted to make sure that this was not going to come off on the paper now here's what I did notice when I thought okay I'm done with my experiment and guess what it did not come off on the paper towel that I could tell at all and I could not tell that it came off on the coffee dyed paper. I couldn't feel it on the coffee dyed paper. I tried to write on the coffee dyed paper. It came out fine. I wish I had my little piece here so I can show you that I, I did that. And show you how my experiment with. Here is what I found when I thought, okay, well, I'm ready to sew this together. And quite by accident, I ended up with this opening up on me. And I was shocked. I put the wax... On this side of the paper well because I reused my wax paper remember how I did put the or the parchment paper I had the parchment paper you know I did a piece you know and then I moved that piece and put another piece on there I didn't use a fresh piece of wax paper each time well this was one that was done was it was not the first one done. as a matter of fact I believe this was the, the very last one that I did if I remember right and don't hold me to my memory um, <clears throat> so there was pretty much a good wax build up on that parchment paper. I did not consider that, you know, when we did this and I finished, I wiped it off with a paper, the front off of the paper towel, you know, to get whatever I thought might be excess wax off. I didn't think about checking the back. Let me tell y'all, this is awful. I mean, it is so rippled and awful. So I want to show you what I'm going to do. I'm only going to do a little bit because I want to show you something else right now. And do, well, no, I can show you all this. All right, I'm going to take and scrape this page with something. You know, maybe a card, maybe my ruler, something. I mean, I want to get, I mean, I could not believe how much excess wax. Look at there. Look how much wax that is, y'all. Is that just insane? So, if you use the wax technique, make sure you check the back of your pieces. <laughs> 
because you can have wax built up like I did and it can be awful, awful, awful. And I just made a terrible mess of my ruler. That was not the brightest idea today. This is a do not use your good ruler to scrape wax with because you know what? You, you get it all yucky. All right, not a good plan. All right, so I will continue with this card and I will scrape this excess wax off because obviously I don't want that on the inside because when I put my you know journaling cards or writing papers or pictures or whatever, I don't want that wax coming off on them. So that looks so much better already. Now I'm gonna try an experiment with y'all and I'm gonna do it quickly because I know I've been taking up so much of your time already today. Um, and this side was not near as bad as this. This was like caked up over here. So I guess I must have been more heavy handed on the wax on one side than I was on the other. Uh, I mean, there, there's a little bit, but not like that other side was. So definitely, you know, the, the more of this is check the back of your pages to make sure you don't have a bunch of wax built up that is going to affect anything next to it. Plus, you know, you don't want these big, funky feeling ripples in your pages, you know, from having, you know, the wax. So anyway, I will, um, I will always make sure to check mine from now on. I love the look. I love that it looks like vellum. It feels like vellum. You know, it acts like vellum. Sounds like vellum. Uh, you know, I just... I love the wax effect. So, yes, I will be doing this again. But I did learn a lesson about checking the backs of my pieces. So, I hope y'all learned from my little... I don't guess it was a mistake because it was an experiment, right? And we just didn't know. So, anyway, I hope y'all learned from my little experiment uh, to make sure you check those pages. But, anyway, you know, this, this just sounds wonderful. It sounds like villain. Now, what I do want to do is after I've scraped that off, I do want to take my paper towel because I still feel like, you know, there's some residue there. So I do want to take my paper towel. And the reason I'm using my paper towel and not my wipe is y'all know I reuse my wipes. And so I wash them and um, I don't want the wax on there because, you know, then it's going to probably not all come out when I wash it. And then, you know how wipes do when you put them in the container together they mingle all up and then you know they take on characteristics of each other and then i'll end up with wax on my other wipes because you know they don't know how to behave once you put them in the container and close the lid anyway so that looks absolutely beautiful there actually i love that that looks nice and shiny well i wish the other side did that maybe i just need to rub it harder Oh, I do. Oh, my goodness, y'all. If y'all rub that really hard and, and really get that wax down into that paper, oh, my God, the look you get then. Mmm, uh, that is yummy. Okay, I will continue with this off camera, but oh, my goodness, I love the look of that. Okay, so... Second lesson, rub it until it is slick as a baby's vine. I mean, that is awesome. And it looks awesome. I'm liking this even better. Can y'all tell how much duller this is than this? The feel is completely different. So, now, we're going to try another experiment real quickly. I'm going to grab another piece of copy dyed paper. Because here's what I want to do. And I forgot to bring my little thermometer in here with me. <clears throat> to make sure that I didn't get too hot on this experiment. Because I'm going to be using my heat tool. Now, what I want to do is we I want to mimic, uh, you know, I wanted to do like 75 degrees, which is about 75 degrees in here. Well, we know through my experiment of putting this on, and, and what I did was I put that down. I had the paper towel, and then I put heavy books on top because I wanted to see if it was going to come off at all, you know, on either, and I did not see that it did. So, now what I want to do is I want to put a little bit of heat. Let's say it gets up to, you know, 90 degrees or 95 degrees or 105 degrees, 
And this is sitting, you know, on a bookshelf in a window with the sun or if you have it in your car because, you know, you take it with you to journal in, you know, and then you go in to see something and you come back out and here's your journal. So I wanted to see, you know, how it would react with the paper if it got heated up. So I have to be careful not to burn myself here. But I want to make sure that I don't get it too hot. Okay, I don't think I have this up to, say, you know, 95 or 100 degrees because my hand could take it and it wasn't a problem. Guess what happened, y'all? The wax on this side melted. I really want to know about the other side, though. Of course, that means that whatever side, you know, the heat gets to, if it gets to a side... All right, let's see how it did on here. Guess what, y'all? I don't think it came off on there. I might see a little bit of shine. I do, I do. And guess what, you can't write on it. So, I may not like this plan much anymore. Because in the real world, We don't always have our homes at you know, 70 degrees, and definitely not our cars, or if we move, you know, and things get packed up and they're in a moving van, and they get hot, or, you know, if you like to journal sitting outside, this probably is not the technique that you would want to use. So I am definitely going to have to rethink using this. So guess what's not going in this journal, this page, because until I know that it is not going to affect my other papers or or let's say let's say I'm going to use it on this journaling page okay let me just fold that in half and we'll just pretend now if I want to heavily embellish this or maybe collage this page where you wouldn't be writing on it then it wouldn't make any difference to me if this page touched that does that make sense so, the same goes for this page. You know, if I collaged it or, you know, heavily embellished it where you wouldn't be writing on it. Or maybe made um, a booklet, you know, a flip-up booklet that you can journal in and just embellish the front of it. So that you wouldn't worry about whether, you know, when this heated up, if it would come off on your page and affect it where you can't write on your page. Then I would use that. But, for the purposes of this journal, I'm not collaging and I don't think I'm gonna make a flip up book for the page, or at least not big enough to, to cover the space. Um, so, I did wanna do this experiment on camera with you. Anytime that I test glues or anything, I usually put them on the lowest setting of my oven and leave the oven door open, you know, to try to mimic real world conditions, you know, how hot it could get, um, you know, if you're carrying a journal in a car, say, or, you know, if you're, you got your stuff packed up in a moving van, or you're taking a trip somewhere, and your stuff is in the trunk of the car, or whatever, and, you know, it gets really, really hot, locked up in a car, or in the trunk of a car, or in a moving van, or whatever, and so I try to mimic those conditions to find out if the glue is still going to stick through those conditions. Now, if the wax is going to move or come off. The other thing I do, like when I test glues, is I put them in the freezer. Because once again, you know, maybe you're going on a trip. Maybe, you know, that something is going on and you're going to visit family in the wintertime. And they, you know, have lost their mind and they live up north somewhere. And, you know, the winters are like below freezing. And, um, you know, you don't know why people live like that, but they do, and they're happy to do it. But you know what? I'm not, mm -mm. it's too cold for me. It's too much. And I am not, not, not shoveling snow. It is okay that I don't get snow. I'm, I'm okay with that. I like snow. 
but I like it to be gone the next day. So that's kind of where I stand on that. So you crazy people up north, I love you. I'll, you know what? All of my dad's side of the family is from Ohio, so, you know. And I give them a hard time all the time, but, you know. And, and they give it back to me, so if y'all want to give me a hard time back, that's okay. I like it. Anyway, I do want to mimic what if, you know, you live in, in Maine or Nova Scotia or Canada or, you know, somewhere where it gets really cold. How will, you know, say the glues react if, if you leave your journal in the car and they freeze? Is, are your papers going to peel up? You know, or how are they going to act? So, I do test anything that I use with heat and with freezing. And then, I go to the extreme, and I'll take it out of the freezer, directly into the oven, and then I take some directly from the oven, directly into the freezer, to see how they're going to react. Because over time, you're going to have different weather conditions. Sometimes it's going to be hot. Sometimes it's going to be freezing cold. So, I want to go to the extremes. If the glue don't hold, I don't want it. And so people say, you know, why do you hate glue sticks? Test them in your oven, in your freezer, and you're going to find out why. Um, that's why, if, you know, I only use glue sticks if I'm going to sew my pieces down. Just my experiment, just my experience. That's why I don't like them unless I'm using, uh, unless I'm sewing as well. Everybody has their own preference. And, you know, but that's how I wanted to test it because I wanted to make sure that if I sold you something or if I gave you a journal as a gift, I don't want you thinking in two or three or five or ten years, wow, what shabby work. This is coming apart, you know. No, I don't, I don't want to do that. I want it to be as good as I can make it without you having to fix what I should have done differently. So, that's just, that's just me, y'all. Um... So, we know now that I'm not going to use that vellum type pocket in here. I will stick with uh, these pieces because they're smaller, and I'll make sure that whatever I have on the facing page um, will not affect the writing. If it does, then I won't use it. You know, again, this is another one of those pieces that I didn't check the back, and guess what? I am able to scrape excess wax off of. So, we did learn a few things to do and not to do, and to try, um, you know, I'm, I'm disappointed that when I heated it up a little bit, I wish I did bring my little, uh, you know, I have a, I was a chef, I told y'all that before, and I have something I would stick in, you know, my sauces or my meats or whatever to see the temperature, you know, even when I'm making cake batter to make sure my batter was at the right temperature or, you know, my ingredients, like my butter or milk or whatever was at the right temperature, um, you know, bread, that's important to have your, your bread at the right temp, your, you know, dough at the right temperature. And so I used it for all that. So I wanted to bring it in here and I forgot, uh, so that when I heated, we could actually see, you know, what temperature we were getting up to, to make sure that I didn't go to any real extremes. Well, y'all saw I was holding it with my hand. It didn't burn me. I wasn't going, oh my God, I can't hold this. So it didn't get that hot. Um, but, yeah, I've, I've learned a lesson. Um, I may end up putting another backing on here just so it doesn't bleed through. You know, through this page, say if it got hot, that it wouldn't bleed through the other. I'm, I'm probably, no, I'm definitely going to do that. So, I'm not sure about wax in the long term. I am going to make a small journal for myself. Um like a, um, a traveler's, actually smaller than a traveler's one, but one I can put in my purse that I can carry with me to the store, leave in the car, you know, real world conditions, just to see how it does. Um, you know, our winters don't get that cold, but you know, sometimes we get down in the teens here, uh, you know, for a couple nights. Um, but, you know, I, I did, it, it does get, you know, freezing and below a little bit, but so I will try it and maybe after a year, see how the wax has reacted in that little journal and even if it's still usable. Then I'll know for sure whether I feel comfortable using it. I think I'm gonna take all these pieces out. I just don't know. You know, I've seen a lot of people here lately using the beeswax and you know, now they're going with other waxes. And the beeswax is the same principle as, as you know, just this candle wax that I use. It's still wax. Um, 
So until I know for sure how this is going to react, I don't think I'm going to recommend using this technique. I think I would rather use, um, and I haven't tried the baby oil technique to make the vellum look yet. I might try that. Once it's dry, they say it does not come off, but I might try, again, heating that up to see if it re-loosens it or, you know, whatever it does, makes the paper release it or whatever. So I may try that. But until this is tested in a real world journal for me, I'm not gonna recommend this. It was a lot of fun. I love the look of it, but I'm not ready to use it just yet. So anyway, great experiment. Um, I had fun doing it. I think y'all probably enjoyed watching the process of doing it. I do encourage you to try it. Uh, I think for an outside cover, it would be awesome because then you wouldn't have to worry about it, you know, affecting your pages on the inside. So, you know, I could do something like, you know, use something like that on the outside cover, particularly since I'm going to do that leather look. That might be something I could actually use, particularly like maybe on the back corner or something. I look really cool. So we'll see. So anyway, okay, that's it for today. Monday, we are going to um, make journal covers. And I'm going to show you two different types of journal covers. Okay. One that is just front and back cover, like you see everybody do. And one that is front and back cover, but also has a spine that these rings will go through. What that'll do is help stabilize these rings, and it helps protect your paper from not the closure part, but the hinge part of these rings, so that it doesn't eat your paper up and you know make them break, cut loose. Because y'all know I'm all about making something that's going to last. So um, I'm so excited about this journal. By then, hopefully, I'll have my pieces glued in place and just about ready for a final flip through. Uh, I'm, I'm so, so, so excited. You know, go ahead and pull out your, your embellishments, pull out your pieces. Oh, I did want to show y'all something I found. Do I have time to do it? Probably not. Nope. I got to go. Okay. Blessings and hugs to everybody. I will see y'all back Monday. Have a great, great, great weekend. Um, God bless you all. I love you all. Thank you all so much for being here. If you have, haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. Would everybody please be so kind and, and hit the like button and leave me a comment. Um, you know, any suggestions that you have, I am open for. I love to hear from you. And, it, you know, please, when you subscribe, hit that notification bell, you know, where it's, you know, all filled in so that you'll be notified every time I upload a video. And I'm going to try to, to make these shorter. Um, but you know, it's just hard when I get to this point, you know, as y'all know, I don't do a lot of, you know, craft with me videos, you know, in, in this series because I don't want y'all watching me ink and sew and all that for, you know, w wasting 30 minutes or an hour of your time when there's so much involved. So we've made it through this process pretty quickly. So I'm going to glue this stuff off camera and then Monday we should be ready to go with the cover. And I may have to, you know, spend another day embellishing or whatever. You have to remember I'm working on other things as well. Plus, you know, I'm disabled and it's hard for me to, you know, work for too long. Okay, I know I'm over. I love y'all. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Thank you to all my new subscribers. Um, I'm so excited about my numbers. Uh, and I am going to be doing a... Um, uh, giveaway pretty soon and I'll tell y'all the details about it. So anyway, y'all come back, see me. Um, I'd love to hear from you. All right. Bye.